Welcome to Surrey, and to be more precise, Hazelmere. And this is the gorgeous Red Beaches fishery. So Red Beaches is a specimen lake on site and it's also lower wade as well. And that's more your sort of pleasure lake. But Red Beaches is a fantastic two acre lake and it's based around socials and lake exclusive bookings. Throughout my session, I'm gonna be fishing with Pete. But he's not actually here, he's away working, but he will be back. So while he's gone, I've got the whole lake to myself three rods at my disposal. I've also got a little float rod in case I've been told there's a lot of lilies, overhanging margins. So I'm gonna have a wander around and see if I can get anything going. Now we're on the island and there is, like I say, space for two. We've got a fire pit, we've got a lovely cabin. It is fantastic and you really do feel tucked away from the world. I absolutely love it down there. There's also the dam over there and sort of that's another place you are allowed to bivy up. And then I believe there's also a swim over there, sort of a jetty that you can bivy up as well. It is fishing from swims only. So you can't just cut hidey holes. However, I've been told there's lilies, there's overhangs, and you can access these from these areas I've already mentioned. So I'm gonna wander around, trickle a bit of bait in, keep an eye on them. I've bought a float rod in case I see an opportunity. There's nothing better than catching carp or any species, I don't think, on a float, especially in the summer. You're very mobile, a lot of ground to cover. But fishing out from here, you can see the majority, I'd say 95 probably percent of the lake, because obviously then it runs around the back of us here and it's very narrow, but there are little hidey holes you can get in and have a look as well. With a central set of pads right at the back, a lot of anglers do very well fishing tight to that and also the overhangs. No bait boats allowed and no rowing boats. So I would suggest approach with caution and do clip up. Throughout the session, I'll talk to you about some of the tactics I'm gonna use, hopefully I can catch you a carp, but also I'm just gonna show you the complex because I'd never heard of it um, and I grew up in Surrey. I don't know, probably hour-ish that way somewhere. Um, but yeah, I'd never heard of it. I looked on YouTube, there was a couple of videos out there to be fair, but it's a real, I hate the saying, but it's a real hidden little gem. And if you are looking for somewhere to come with your mate, maybe bring a family member, this is a great place to come. There's some incredible carp to catch, going up to 30 pound, I believe, both mirrors and commons. There's some tench, we've seen plenty of rod and perch activity as well. But this is one lake you can just get left alone, do what you want, and hopefully you'll bank some of the special ones in here. Well, I'm absolutely wounded. So I got her at eight with Pete, walked round, didn't really see much, got set up, and then we got some work to do, we got some filming to do in bit. And then I saw some fees in, so I thought, right, first rod, get out. Smaller said I had stinky bait, because it's quite coloured water, stinky garlic pop up. And I was just sitting here doing some rigs, getting the coffee on, and then, what would you know, the rod's away. So I've run up there at the camera, Ooh, bobbin's come back down. Looked out, still a bit of fizz, and I thought, oh, I've had a liner, you know, great. Sitting here, sitting here. Boom, pulled up tight, rods pulled round, probably fishing 30 odd yards out. Hit into it, and before I've even felt anything, I'm round the corner and I can feel it snack. And you might see I might have some footage, I'm sort of pulling, pulling, I can feel it grating. So I've loosened the clutch, gone on, chucked my waders on. Got down, followed it, right, freed it under one snag, and then I got into a bush, freed it out, still feel it kicking. I thought, result, got no footage, Pete's up having a call, but I thought, never mind, the main thing is a fish. So I've done that, and then it pinged off out to another, and it's still lunging every now and then, and then a big boy will come up behind this big, massive snag. So I thought, right, it's in there. So as I get to that snag, I must have been just that close on top of it. As I've gone through that massive head shake, eruption, Boom, my rig's come out, fish has bolted off, mirror. Um, I, I, I'd be lying if I said how big it was, I, I had no idea. All I see was a nice flank, good scales, chestnut brown coloration. And what do you know it? I'm soaked, got too much water in my waders, and the fish has got away with it. So I've 
got the rod back out, fingers crossed. I weren't expecting to bite that quick, if I'm honest. It was sort of got it out, a bit of fizzing, see what happens, you know, wait here and see what's going to sort of play out in front of me. Absolutely devastated. I know bites on here can be tricky to come by. And if I've just blown my only chance, I will not forgive myself. You know, there's some real incredible fish in here. And I just hope and pray I'll get another go. If not, it's going to be a tale of one that got away, I'm afraid. But finish my coffee. We'll actually start it and finish it. And then I'll show you guys what Red Beaches is all about. But that is not the way I wanted to start my journey. The only good thing I can take from that is if you get on the fish, you can seem to nick a bite and they didn't turn their nose up at my bait. So fingers crossed, we can get another one. You really could just spend all day walking and walking, just looking. So the pads out here, if you can make them out, are huge. They probably run, I don't know, maybe a good 30 yards, something like that. And they're quite deep as well. Um, again, maybe two, three rod lengths in places. And although they haven't budded yet, I imagine they look fantastic when they come out, a real sort of splash of colour. And let's be honest, all fish, the carp, the tench especially, that are in here, that are, are, are sort of your go-to target fish, if you like, they love a pad. I like to look for the knocking of them, you know, and then try and work out where they're going, but I've been watching these all day while he's been away visiting other fisheries. And I haven't seen anything. I've got to say, they do seem to be quite tricky in here. Seem to be a bit elusive. I'm not the stealthiest angler, don't get me wrong. Look at the size of me. I've got massive feet, clumsy as you like. But I'd like to think I'd have seen some more. But that just that intrigues me. That makes me want to know where they are and I reckon I will be back to try and find them. Right, so what I'm gonna do is get a little bit of bait, I think. Obviously I had that chance this morning, so I'm gonna apply a small bit of bait in there. Not much, but I want plenty of scent small bits really, they were really grubbing round fizzing um, and I'll probably start only with about five bombs or so, something like that, but I'm just going to knock up a few bits I take with me everywhere. A bit of corn, you can never go wrong with a bit of corn I don't think. Everything loves it and I know there is some tension here, and that's not everyone's bag. I don't mind catching your tension, so I'll quite happily do that. And I want some small particles like hemp, so I'm always prepared. A little bit of penny, and then I'm going to crumb up some boilies and keep some as half, some as bits. But again, like I say, not loads. I will keep some whole ones as well, because then if the tents do become a problem, I think at least some of these bigger baits might stay there. Yeah, it's a coloured venue, so for me, it's all about scent. Good soft bait. Do love a good quality freezer bait. And then that will do for now, I think. Give it a good mix. And get it in while it's quiet, like I say. Because if that was, well, nothing happens on it today. At least I know I'm in prime time for tomorrow when hopefully they come back.
So having spoke to the chaps that now own it, it took them two years to clear the site before anything, and no fish in, no nothing. There were so many trees. It was, you couldn't walk around it, couldn't get on the island. It was just relentless. And these are big trees, you know, it's not, it's not small. They're proper, you've got your oaks, you've got your red beaches, you've got willows, you've got so much going on. But what I love is it's manicured, but it still feels very old. It's almost got that club syndicate feel, sort of that estate, country park kind of vibe. It's absolutely quality. Well, mate, nice to be on the bank with you at last. Yeah, it's been nice. Nice. And it must be weird for you. Red Beach is obviously a fishery you signed and brought on to catch. Mm. How's it actually to be here now, you know? Yeah, it's the first time I've actually been on site to the venue. And uh, yeah, really pretty place, really peaceful and quiet as well. Um, Richard, when I first spoke to him back in October of last year, um, said how peaceful it is and you got the lilies, you got, you know, nice margins and just a really beautiful place to be. And this is the first time I've managed to get up here now. So yeah, really, really pleasant. I think I was quite pleasantly surprised as well. Like you say, like we go to a lot of venues, very fortunate, but mm. it's got very much a secluded sort of almost forgotten estate lake vibe yeah. about it, isn't it? You know, you've got all the roadies are coming out in blossom. It's, it's real pretty to sit. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Yeah, really, really nice. And it's interesting, in fact, it's fairly shallow. I mean, the water's probably down at the moment anyway, um, but I think there's a fair good head of carp to over the 30 pound mark, I think. Um, but I think what surprised me and you is the fact I lost one stupidly earlier on, <laughs> and then you've had a pike yeah. on the stiffy. Yeah. But we haven't really seen anything, have we? Like, no, we, have, we saw a couple, haven't we? Like, that one about half an hour ago. Yeah. That was the first proper show. You saw one, one in the in the edge over my spot when I wasn't here. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean a couple in the pads. But like you say, it's not they're not really showing. No, you, not, not what you'd expect this time of year. Yeah, not that real sheeting up, are mm, they? Or no. you know, it's. No. I mean, it's definitely it's got its challenges. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can see it's yeah. definitely it's got. A, it's one of those waters where you know. You probably want to come down for a good three, three four nights. It definitely it's catered on a lake exclusive basis. Yeah. Three swims. Um, you've got a double which we're in. Nice swim in the corner as well. But uh, Richard does allow anglers to fish on the uh, down wall as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you've got good access all the way around the lake. Yeah. I mean, where we are though is a great social hub, isn't it? For, mm. for a lake exclusive. Yeah. It's especially if there's two of you, I think, but oh, 100%. you can see so much of the water and obviously what with the cabin and the fire pit and stuff like that, it's yeah. it's the perfect place to come sort of get away, but it's that small water syndrome, isn't it, you know? <laughs> yeah. you, you, you don't know if you're overthinking it, you don't know if you're going, oh, they're a bit tricky or they can hear me, I've made too much disturbance, but... How much bait to put in yeah. and, you know, times of years, you know, I suppose it changes, but... Yeah, uh, Richard said to me that a little tip was to put in a little bit of bait, you know, bit of bait for a bite at a time. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's a gorgeous place to be, nonetheless. Oh yeah, of know? course it is. Um, um, but you definitely want to do a few good few nights down yeah. here. And again, I think fanning our rods out like we have, different areas, different options going mm. on. Hopefully, we can exactly start putting sort of the pieces to the puzzle and. Mm. Yeah, first night, and then with another one to go, hopefully we'll have something to show. Yeah, definitely. Let's hope so. I mean, like I say, through the daytime, you can sort of just treat it as a, just sit down and look at the, just watch the water, because it's so hot in the daytime at the moment that yeah. the carp aren't really switched on. And that's the, that's the beauty of where we are, because of the red beaches, hence the name. You're quite sheltered. It's been you? it's been really comfortable. There's nothing yeah. worse than sweating one out in your bivvy in no, the no. Of the day. I was in there time rigs earlier, and it was just you yeah. Know, but when you come out under the trees, all through the day, you've got sun if you want it, yeah. but the shade is there, and it's a really nice place just to chill and get out of the way of it. Well, fingers crossed. Moving into this sort of twilight time, we might actually either see something else because, like you said, that's the first bit of activity we've seen, or yeah, nick a bite. But early morning, I reckon. Yeah. Yeah. Early morning's got to be a shout. Well, I'll shut these off and we'll see them in the early morning then. <laughs> Get on.
Well, Pete was right last night. We tried and we got you a fish. Just on light. <laughs> Just under 16 pound. Lovely little linear, look at that. And it didn't fight at all, really surprised me. But I think as of yesterday, because I lost that one in the snags, I sort of just rod down and just kept winding. And it was almost swimming straight towards me, which is why I think he's got a lot of energy now. But yeah, great to get off the mark here at Red Beaches. And beautiful little fish and all, look at that. Love it. Happy days. <laughs> Well, Peter, that's a turn up for the books. Yeah, that come out of the blue. Good smile, mate, it's your first bite. <laughs> Sorry, mate, yeah. <laughs> Just woke up. <laughs> Is there a better way to wake up? Fighting well now. Got him out of the pads and it just kite straight towards me. And now it's woken up, like me. It's been a long time since I've ran out of the uh, bivvy for a bite without any shoes on. That just shows everyone how comfortable you was. <laughs> nice looking mirror. Come on. That's a nice one, isn't it? I think so. Just happy to get a bite. Shout about it. Nice wake up call. A nice 26 and a half pound mirror from Red Beaches. Fishing to the far side, just off the pads. Absolutely tore off. Look at that proper character. All spawned out. A nice mid 20. Can't beat that at half six in the morning. Well, not quite the intended species, but off the baited spot, drop back, and I've had this absolutely stunning example of a tench. Look at that. And all my friends that know me, I do love a tinker, so I am not complaining. It's always nice to get a bite. It's just a colossal fish, I'm loving that. I'll have a couple of steals from my own album, and then I'll get him back. Right, well, my session's drawn to a close, and what a great time. I've thoroughly enjoyed being here. It's one of those places that just gets under your skin. Made up with our results, it has been quite tricky. However, what I would take from this, always walk the margins, keep walking, walking, and walk some more. 
trickle a little bait, bit of bait in and just keep going. Don't give up on that. You know, if you find the slightest hint or sign of a carp, do react to it. Also on that, fish for a bite at a time. You know, Pete's mega myriad off them pads come to a single. Now it was literally a bit of rocky water, something he saw in the pad that caught his eye, I think the day before. So he got a single out there and he was happy to sit on it. Thirdly, do beware of the snags. Learn from my mistake. I should have got on top of it. It was too late before I did, it done me. <sighs> Absolutely gutted, but just stay on your odds, I guess, you know, fish sensibly. But it's one of those venues, just come and enjoy it. It is so different, it's refreshing. I've listened to the pheasants since I've been here. We've seen umpteen kingfishers, herons, there's been so much going on. It's just a place you can come and sort of get away from everything, I guess, you know, and focus on your angling. But if you haven't checked it out already, get on catch, check it out, and book your social. What are you waiting for? <laughs>